Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Nines video with myself and Mike today. Um, a breakdown on a very exciting Brazilian talent in Luiz Galermi. Uh, this coming out from Fabrizio last night saying that we've agreed personal terms with the 2006 born talent. Um, everything's ready. 30 million euros plus a 20% future sale fee. So quite an expensive one. And again, at the end there, West Ham are almost uh, <laughs> cautious until the end. Obviously putting that in with the recent Bruno breakdown in Brazil. So yeah, there's been a lot online so far, Mike, about this, you know, wonder kid, the superstar coming out of Brazil, a lot of hype around him. Um, and obviously it's a it's a player Tim Steiden's identified as someone as part of that project long term to, to building the future of West Ham and, and trying to look for these types of deals. But again, just as a background for everyone that's watching, uh, Guilherme, yeah, from Brazil, 18 years old, left footed, uh, predominantly plays on the right wing right now for Palmeiras. Um, but again, he can kind of operate across the across the front three. So he can play left wing, right wing, uh, attacking midfield in that number 10 position or advanced eight. Uh, that's where some of the Brazilian journalists are saying is his best position. Um, but currently they play like Rafael Viega, who's like 28. So the manager definitely prefers playing him in the number 10. So it's meant that Guilherme's mainly played out on that right-hand side or left-hand side when he has played. Um, and again, yeah, people... We'll look at the statistics, Mike, where it's one goal and three assists in 48 appearances since uh, since coming up through the youth team. Um, but again, when you when you actually look into the minutes, it's a total of 1,493, which doesn't equate to 48, like full 90 minutes. It's around 16 games. So it's around about the same amount of time as Divine Mabama he's had uh, in our first team. Yeah. So when you exactly. look at that. Yeah, comparison, a comparison like that is very good. So... I think that's the first thing before we get into the actual breakdown, because people look at those, but there's a lot more that the statistics say, which is why we are excited about this type of signing and why it could be a very interesting move for West Ham to make is kind of debunking that because, yeah, people just look at the goals and assists. They've seen a two minute comp online and they've made their mind up as to why are we paying this much for an 18 year old. Uh, explain to me why it's more important to look into deeper statistics than just the eye. Yeah. So if you just go... So anything with scouting, it, it has to be a level of subjective and objective. Now, the problem is with the objective, such as stats, is if not looked at or if cherry picked, it can be very dangerous precedent it can set. For instance, it can set out as this player is a terrible footballer because he's had 43 games and he only has one goal and one assist. Mm -hmm. So that that picture that has been painted by people who have not done any education on themselves. And to be honest, I know it sounds really harsh, but it's true because if that's your initial standpoint, you haven't looked any further than the face value ones of that. And this is the problem as well in that football has become, well, statistics are great and we love statistics. We talk about them all the time. They're also incredibly dangerous when you don't then start looking at other factors as well. And what's happened here is people have looked at the, the 43 and or 48, whatever it is at it now, yeah. uh, and then the one goal, one assist, and God, well, that's clearly he's not creative and he doesn't score. But then they haven't then looked, taken a deeper level as to how many minutes has he played? How many shot opportunities is he getting in a game? Where are those shot opportunities coming? How many chances does he get to create in a game? How many kind of crosses does he put in? It's it just, it kind of just, it, it's such a basic conversation point. Mm -hmm. To just go one goal, one assist. And it's yeah. so reductive that it re removes any level of objectivity and just allows you to essentially put a, a, a superfluous kind of subjective view forward without actually any knowledge. And it, it just, it's so easy to debunk with a, like five minutes of research. Yeah. And it, it's just. Well, let's let's look at those because I think it is important, isn't it? So let's start with the kind of shot create, like you mentioned, a shot creation positions, uh, finding those opportunities, and you know comparing it with the goals and assists tally that he's got. So this is in terms of his shooting percentiles from this season. Again, it's only been kind of nine or ten games, and it's comparing him with the the other fourteen, so not the top five leagues. Um, and you look at this and you say, okay, it doesn't look very good. Um, so why is it important to not just look at this uh, section of statistics, Mike? Yeah, but I, I think, yeah, if you just look at this, you go, oh, well, he's got, you know, 0.9, so 0 0.9 goals per 90. But what's important to add is that look how many shots he has in a game. So he has around about two shots per game, which puts him just below average. Uh, his shots on target, you know, 
half of his shots basically are on target or you know a quarter of his shots but 28 percent as a on target is not bad especially when then you start to go down look where his average shot distance is it's 20.6 yeah. so the shots that he's getting are very few and far between in the area so the system currently is not allowing him or placing him in a position where he can get into those more high percentage sh uh, kind of shot to goal ratio areas i think he's playing very he's playing very wide on the right hand side <laughs> a lot of the time you know from from a lot of the stuff we've looked at he is operating in those kind of wider flanks <laughs> and you know the again you, you say there that the the style of the football club and the, the way he's playing in that system he's not going to be in and around those areas and again you can see like you said the shot distance uh you know a lot of his shots are coming from you know outside the box so when he's it comes to doing like all your Hold, hugging a touchline, cutting in and shooting from distance. Yeah. That's what he's doing. And it, one of his, I think, uh, the one goal that he has is actually a shot from distance, which he's absolutely yeah. smashed uh, yeah. in past the goalkeeper. And this is the important thing, that we're looking at a winger that we can develop. And there are a lot of traits about him that is very similar to what we love about Mo Kudus. Yeah. Now, Mo Kudus, obviously, we paid 30 million for him. He's more established. But what we're buying in the elephant in the room is, well, what are we buying for 30 odd million quid? Or, uh, well, not pounds, it's, it's in euros. And euros, yeah. Again, it's, it's also not going to be a 30 million pounds up front. But yes, we are buying potential. That is, without doubt, we're buying potential. However, if that potential comes true, we have a player that is going to be worth more than Mokudus. We're going to have a player that's possibly going to be worth more than what Declan Rice was. This is a kid who's been talked up since the age of 16. He's been a player since the age of 16 who's been a kind of a word in football. It was him and Endrick, been... wasn't it? Because they, they're yeah. also in the same team. And, you know, you see Endrick's just gone to Real Madrid for, what, 50 million or something. So. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is those two players were coming through and both were talked about. Now, Endrick has taken a lot of the, the praise and so has uh, Esteval, who's just essentially bought, um, bought by Chelsea, they have kind of grabbed the headlines where it's allowed Lewis to essentially go a bit under the radar and kind of do his development. And this is a player who's been courted by Liverpool, by Manchester United. Man City have looked at, have also been interested, but they also have Savio con um, currently at, at Granoa. So when you start to hear those names and then you start to then hear West Ham fans going, oh, well, I don't agree with it. Or this idea of what I find funny is happy to buy Gasova because he has more goals and assists, mm -hmm. and yet not this player that could potentially be a hundred million pound player. I think that was the the main the main point people say online, isn't it? They've they've seen the goals and assists. That's that's number one, and number two is the fee you're paying. But again, you say as you say, you're not paying for a ready made talent. You're paying for someone that could potentially go three, four, five times that value. And you know, as you were saying there, back to the kind of shot creation. When you kind of look at the actual goal and shot creation that he's that he's operating in, this gives a better better picture, right, Mike, of what's actually happening. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see the shot creating actions. He's in the ninety third percentile. The kind of it's ridiculous to be doing that. Dead balls as well. He is a set piece player as well. He can take uh, takes corners quite often for them. Takes great set piece. And he can take on players and create opportunities for shooting. Again, ninety fifth percentile. You know, if you start to look at things like that, all of a sudden it completely flips the conversation as to what this player can do. And yeah. whilst he's not necessarily creating goals, we also again have to review the the team that he's playing with. He has a very young centre forward up front as well, who's around 18, 19 in, yeah. in, in Endrick. Uh, Estefan, I think, is also about 19, 20. So you have a, arguably a lot of times a front three that is no older than 20 years old playing against seasoned pros obviously there's going to be times where they're not making the right uh kind of either shot selections pass selections and so on yeah but what we can see is that he can create opportunities to get a shot he can create opportunities for others to have a shot and that's what you need you need you yeah. need a player that's creative and can do this and one of the things that we've been absolutely praying for is pace and he has pace in abundance Electric, he's yeah. so quick just like with Mo Kudis. And he likes to drop deep. He likes to receive the ball. He's quite happy to hug the touchline and then take a player, isolate a player one-on-one -on -one, and then beat them for pace, beat them with a bit of skill. He's everything 
fans have been calling for. However, it's that, oh, but he's 30 million. That's too expensive. And what I find baffling is that this conversation of, oh, we trust, we trust Tim Stein, but I don't trust him on this one. Uh, and then the, the conversation is, well, well, actually, it's not that I don't trust him, actually, when they kind of question it, oh, I don't agree with spending this much money. Well, the counter argument to that is, which none of these people that are constantly saying, oh, we don't have the budget, we don't have the budget. You're basing this budget conversation on what two ITKs have said. One has said it's about 60 million quid. The other one says it's substantial and not given a figure. So people have with no concept of what this budget is, and people were assuming that it's the low end. Yet the more respected ITK, I'm not going to name their names because you know who they are, has said it's substantial. So if it's substantial, it's not going to be 60 million pounds. So we're not spending half of our budget on this young kid. And yeah, also think... the other conversation point that people are not considering is, well, if we're spending this money, it's because we have the budget to spend on him and our other targets. Or the other conversation point is that this is viewed as such an exceptional talent that we have to go out and spend the money. Yeah. We also, we, I mean, it's, it, we also don't know what's going to happen this transfer window. Obviously, we've got Paqueta who, who might be gone. Even Kudus, to be honest, if, if a big club comes calling for Kudus, it's going to be very difficult to keep hold of him. So, yeah, as you say, we, we're going to need to strengthen. I think that is obviously, it, it's important that we get this squad rebuild right because there's a lot to do. Um, but as you say, if they're, if they're going ahead with a steal, then we have to put trust into the club. Um, we have to put trust into what Steiner is trying to do. Um, and there's no doubt this guy could be, as you say, he could easily three, four times his value in, in a couple of years just by the type of player he is. He, he really does give me Kudus vibes in, in the fact that his biggest strengths look like his pace and his ball carrying. Um, and, you know, as we go into also the, kind of the passes as well, and it's, it's important that, you know, people look into this a little bit more. I think what what we've got right now is a player that's operating in areas that aren't necessarily in goal scoring areas of the pitch is much more deeper which is why his you know key passes again that uh, he's kind of averaging 2.64 key passes a game which is pretty high up um he likes to put passes into the penalty area crosses into the penalty area so he's someone that's more of a creator right now in that system and then you kind of look as well at, at the possession stats and the type of you know progressive carries which is you know, it's very, there's a lot of parallels with how Kudus plays, you know, look at the progressive carrying distance per 90, um, you know, the amount of carries he's doing per 90, you know, the the carries into the final third, you know, he's he's very much uh, someone who will get the ball and take it forwards. And, you know, as you can see there, he's averaging almost, what, six progressive carries uh, a, a game, which is very high, um, as you can see there, 97 percentile. So, Kudus. Basically, Kudus exactly. is the kind of the set, and it's yeah. you see he plays from deeper, and it's they they are at times a bit transitional in how to play, which is brilliant for us. We've got, we've got a manager who is going to look to be quick in transition. We have players that are brilliant in transition, like Mo Kudus. Now, if you add someone like Luis to come in, and it also has that ability. All of a sudden, you have potentially two players who can be playing on either flank. Needs to be game, you know, games dictating who are exceptionally quick, incredibly good at carrying the ball and taking it forward. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's important to remember, this is an 18 year old kid yeah, exactly. who is able to take, who was willing to take that level of responsibility to carry possession. And by carrying possession, you are effectively carrying your team. You're taking responsibility and dragging your team up the pitch. And he does that around about six times per game. And also a lot of those, a lot of those progressive carries as well. You know, a lot of the time it will be into space, but a lot of them is like you say, beating a man one on one because with his pace and he yeah. can go outside, he can come inside. Like he's, he's very good. He's a very good player, it's, and you can see the a talent. Really exciting player, and this is yeah. what I find baffling is because people come fixated on this forty odd games, one goal, one assist, thirty million, and it's actually it's so reductive. It actually refuses then to have a conversation around what the actual talent is and what we're actually buying. Yeah. And even with his passing stats, he's an 18 year old kid and his yeah. passing stats are phenomenal. The amount of, you know, creating was it 2.9 uh, key passes per game. Yeah, you know, that's creating nine, goal scoring yeah. opportunities and shot, shot opportunities in a game. He's creating opportunities in which you can hurt the opposition. He plays a lot of long balls and a lot of uh, switches play quite often. So, again, he's a player that has that vision to get his head up and realise when a switch is on mm -hmm. to then change the direction of play in which to exploit the opposition. 
But because people become fixated on these essentially nonsensical stats, it's blinded them away from actually what type of player we're buying. And we're buying yeah. a player that's highly creative, incredibly flexible in terms of positional um, centre-wise, because he can play the right side, play as an attacking midfielder, can play as left. This arguably could be our replacement for uh, Lewis Paqueta in you know next year, essentially. If he, if he performs well this year, he could arguably be in our attacking uh, centre midfielder. Yeah. And we've replaced Lewis Paqueta who maybe goes for 80 million or whatever. Let's just say for hypothetically, he goes for 80 million. Bought in his replacement a year early. So we bedded him in for 30 million pounds or 30 million euros, or so 25 million quid, give or take. And then for someone that's potentially going to be worth even more than the player he's replaced. What phenomenal business. How are we not concentrating on the, the potential for this to be an astounding piece? Now, there, you said at the start, there is a risk. Obviously, there's a risk. Every transfer has risk. Yeah. But we've also been begging and praying as a fan base for these young, hungry players and making high risk decisions, which could have high reward. And now we're actually implementing that, this hesitancy, and think, there yeah. are questions against it. And it's it, that to me, this is what I find so baffling and confusing about this. I just think it's. Thing. I just think it's too early to, in the transfer window to to start doing this and start, you know, I, I have reservations about spending 30 million euros on an 18 year old. Everyone, everyone has that. It's a risk. Like it is a risk, but it's someone where, again, after doing actual analysis of the player and what he could potentially bring to West Ham is a very exciting move. You know, you're getting a young Brazilian superstar, potentially potential superstar, sorry, that is coming to join West Ham, which is something we are not accustomed to as a club. And I think, again, there's a massive squad rebuild needed. We need to get the balance right between these types of deals and, you know, people that are going to come in to, you know, a less risky, uh, you know, as, as you want to say. But we need to also make these types of signings, you know, because they, as you say, they could pay dividends. And I think, I've, you know, we've seen enough of this, this Gil Hermy to, to know that he has got the potential to be a very, very, very top talent. So, yeah, I think think it's going to be an interesting one. Um, out of 10, uh, if we pull this off, Mike, as we do with every tra potential transfer, what would you rate it? Oh, mate, if we can pull this off, this is like a nine. Like, I, I, you know, I'm like, I can't ever give 10s. I just yeah. can't. I just can't do it. It's within me. Um, but it's like a nine, 9.5. If we pull this off and this kid hits the ground running, it's absolutely a nine. Yeah. And he will excite people. He'll get people off his feet. Like when we watch Mo in full flow going for it. it, it's that type of player. And it's the type of player that us as fans, West Ham fans, have always loved. That player mm -hmm. who can just carry the ball and do something with it, you know, creative, you know, good vision and so on. And this is, again, is something we've been crying out for and saying we need his vision. So he's only 18. There are going to be periods where he's formed dips and, you know, he may at times struggle this year. But we've got to remember, he's an 18-year-old kid. And if we want the likes, you know, we were begging for the likes of Earthy. We want to see Earthy in the team as well. Yeah. We've got to accept that these young players at times are going to struggle and have dips in form. But this is why then you also have the likes of Bowen. And yeah. Kudis it's, it's, to, yeah, it's, it's getting the balance, pressure. isn't it? And it's getting the balance and, and you know, remembering that it's an 18-year-old that's got a lot of development ahead of him. You know, we could sit here right now and say, yeah, his shot, his shooting, and output in the final third isn't good enough. Uh, you know, he's he's at too. At the moment, he isn't. That, that's a god's only truth. It just isn't at the moment. But and that's but that's not a reason to not go ahead with this type of this type of transfer because you know again we could sit here and say you know his decision making in the final third needs to improve. It's not strong enough right now to be in the Premier League starting eleven for West Ham. You know he's too one footed at times. He needs to be able to use his right foot in better areas. But that's not looking at the potential value and the positives of this type of signing. And, you know, it's not like he's signing to become our first, you know, starting right winger. That's that's not this type of signing. That's why it's also important to remember that because it's, you know, it's not someone we're going to be expecting to play 90 minutes in the Premier League every game. It's not that type of signing. I'm sure we'll be making those signings throughout the summer where play, players are going to come in and expect it to be in that starting 11, playing 90 minutes. And until we see those signings happen, Let's get excited by these potential ones, uh, well, not potential, these these potential superstars that would be coming in from the likes of Brazil because that is where you will find these gems and that is what Tim Steiner's job is to do. So we have to trust him. 
he knows what he's talking about. He's been in Brazil enough. He's been doing this a long time. Yeah. So I think uh, I think we just need to put trust into him and we'll see again at the end of the transfer window where we are. But yeah, Luis Gilherm, Gilhermi, potentially to West Ham. Looks like it's edging closer. It's not done yet as of recording this on Saturday morning. Um, but hopefully in the next few days, there'll be a bit more development. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you think of the deal, uh, whether you'd like to see Gilhermi at West Ham or is a little bit too much out of our price range uh, for you guys before we go ahead with it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the analysis, please do leave a like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new around here. Uh, Mike, until the next one. Come on, you guys.